Hi everybody, Timmy Mix here and today I want to show you the advanced white balancing in color grading after the intro. You know that correcting an image is essential for a correct white balance. And you know too that the simplest way to do it is using the white balance eyedropper here in the most bottom left corner. And how to do it? Most people just choose this eyedropper and click everywhere in the image on a point which seems to be neutral, white or gray, right? But what if you don't have such an white or gray area in your image? And what about the darker shadows? Clicking the pick black point tool is one solution, but to be honest, it doesn't work for me to solve this problem. Don't do that. Furthermore, don't use a Luma versus SAT curve. It's not the same and it gives you not the same results as if you do it manually by balancing out the colors. Okay, the white balance is mainly used to balance the primary colors red, green and blue in such a way that these colors all come to the same level in their highest values, ideally resulting these highest values in a horizontal line. You can achieve that by using the curves, the primary wheels, the temperature slider or <clears throat> the primary bars and some more. But the topic of this tutorial is not to show you all these tools to achieve that result. I will dive a bit deeper into color correction because, as mentioned, only white balance is not enough in case of balancing out an image properly. It's just one part of it. And in this tutorial, I will try to show you what's important too. But let's start and let's use the white balance eyedropper to set the white point just by clicking here, for example. Let me show you something. If you look at the waveform by using a qualifier tool, you can see that my darkest areas are not clean or well balanced even though I just did the white balance. If you switch to the RGB parade, you can see it more clearly. Hmm, that's not what we want. So let's do it manually. For this, I switch back to the waveform because here I can see better if I reach a neutral state of a shade, in this case in the shadows. If the colors overlay each other, then it's a neutral shade and the curve overlap and these areas appear white. Therefore, I love to use the waveform in addition to the RGB parade to balance out my image. Okay, I will do the shadows in a separate note so I can better show you the difference. If I move my qualifier over this region here, you can see that's not neutralized. I have a bit too much blue and a bit less red, but we can fix it by using the lift color wheel, but I will demonstrate it today with a primary boss. All we have to do is to lower my green a bit to compensate the lack of red and then the blue to, to decrease it something like this. So. If I now switch this node on and off, you can see this massive difference. Remember, we just did a white balance using the white balance eyedropper. Not my favorite tool, because sometimes it works, sometimes not, depending on many things. So learn the white balance manually too. It's one of the most important habits of a colorist. It's part of the basics. Okay, let's switch this shadow node on and the white balance node off and on and off just for controlling what happens here. If you look at the waveform, you see that our whites are balanced out properly. And if I switch it off, you can see how this white balance affects our darkest shadows too. That's a really important fact and you should keep in mind if you balance the gain or gamma, it will affect the lift too and vice versa. That's how the primary wheels work. Okay, let me show you something more. If I turn these two nodes here on and off, you will recognize that we achieve a much more contrast in our image. And why? It's quite simple. We have much more shades in between. I mean the midtone range and clean black and white. That's it. 
without adjusting the contrast slider. That's what a color contrast can do for us. And by the way, now it's much easier to creating a look and if you want so adding a LUT. But you know, I try to dissuade you from using LUTs. So in summary, what you should always keep in mind is that doing a white balance is not only using the white balance eyedropper that mostly isn't accurate enough, but can be used as a starting point. And sometimes it just works well, but mostly only if you have also set your white balance correctly in camera. Otherwise, you have to do it manually, so learn this technique. It's not hard. Practice makes you perfect. Anyway, but there is something else you can do in terms of a well-balanced image. For this, we have to switch to the RGB parade. Okay, I have turned on my white balance and shadow balance nodes. And if I look to my RGB parade, there's something like a pattern. And this pattern is usually always visible in a good balanced shot. If you have skin tones in your image, it's something like a rule of thumb. Of course, it always depends on the image, but it's almost always very applicable when it comes to balancing. Have a look at the RGB parade. Our black and white is balanced and the image looks good so far. And now look closer especially at the midtones. They are not balanced in that manner like the black and white and we didn't expect anything else. Otherwise, we would have a black and white image. Look at this area, this pattern here. If I move my qualifier over the skin tones, keeping an eye on my parade, you will see that we have something like a line from top left to bottom right flat falling. That means we have more red than green and more green than blue. It doesn't matter where I move my qualifier, the colors red, green and blue almost always stays at this line. So the first thing is that you can use this technique to control your skin tones very quickly. But let's go one step further. If you have an image with skin tones, you will recognize this pattern again and again. And that's the rule of thumb. Look at your parade if you have an image with skin tones. This line should always have an angel of about 15 degrees. Then you can be sure that your image is balanced properly. You will always recognize this pattern. Try it out. And by the way, this rule is used every day by all pro colorists I know. Trust me, it will not change your life, but it helps you a lot in your color grading. And finally, let me show you something more. For that, I create a new version and turn my adjustment nodes here off. I add a node after the first node and now I will adjust the temperature. Have a look at the parade while I'm doing it. Can you see which colors are moved? Only red and blue, because that's how the temperature adjustment works. That means if you adjust the temperature, if necessary, keep an eye on your scopes and try to balance out this line of 15 degrees. It will give you a much better feeling now if you balance out your shot. And last but not least, of course, you can do your white balance with a temperature adjustment too, but never the black point at the same time. You will always only get one of them, a proper white or black point. But that doesn't matter because now you know how to balance out your image. So now you are able to balance a shot properly with or without using the eyedropper for white balance. For sure, you can do the white balance with different tools, but that's not the point. The point is to understand what you should balance out and why and what it does with your image. I hope I could help you a bit more to improve the white balance and color correction skills for your color grading. So we are done. And if you want to see more content like this, please don't forget to subscribe and click the bell. Stay safe. Thanks for watching and listening. You all a great time. Bye.